Is everything all right between us? We are... I love you. Sorry. It is so hard to keep my feelings contained. Wait. Does Curie really love you? Perhaps more to the point. Can she love you? Hmm. That's a good question. Can a synth fall in love? Is Curie perhaps a special case? In this video, we'll take a look at synthetic love in the Commonwealth. <laughs> this should be interesting. Okay, let's go. Love, love, love. In the world of Fallout 4, late model Gen 3 synths are almost completely organic. And this includes their brains, as you probably know if you've ever double tapped one. Though it is true that a non-organic synth component is normally found in their remains. Can't believe it. He looked just like Sammy too. Sure as hell didn't act like him. Institute thinks they can replace people with synths in this town. They got another thing coming. Hey, just a friendly neighborhood watch. Shooting down Institute spies as they crop up. But Curry has a unique origin. However, before I go on, can I quickly ask you to duck down there on the screen and hit the like button if you're enjoying this? I would greatly appreciate that. That would be awesome. For those of you who have played Fallout 4, you will know that Curry ain't your ordinary Gen 3 synth. As we know, she was originally a Miss Nanny bot. Much of what she knows comes from Kenneth Collins in Vault 81, who reprogrammed her to act as a lab assistant, adding classical literature to her memory banks. Just as an aside, the whole concept of just uploading the contents of a book, although it happens a lot in sci-fi science fiction, there's a big difference between uploading the contents of a book and understanding the meaning of that book. There is a great theory I read online that both Curie and Codsworth have a great capacity for emotional attachment as they have been around for over 200 years and the role of years has generated idiosyncrasies in their personality matrix. This idea is certainly the case in the Star Wars universe. I always think of Chopper from Star Wars Rebels and now Ahsoka. He's that grumpy old droid. <laughs> Uh, he cracks me up, I love him. But he's like that because he hasn't he hasn't been reset for a long time and I don't think there's any plan to do so. And as such, the longer he goes without a reset, the more of a personality he develops. It's a great idea and I think something similar has happened to Curry and has happened to Codsworth. Right at the start of the game, your character, the lone survivor, has got fresh memories for how Codsworth should behave. The lone survivor comments that he's worried about Codsworth because Codsworth is acting differently. As I live and breathe. Codsworth, you're acting a little bit weird. What's wrong? I, I, oh sir, it's been just horrible. This difference is in part just due to the, the changes to Codsworth's personality over the years. What's up, Codsworth? <laughs> and when you returned, I was overjoyed. I admit I ran a full diagnostic scan just to make sure I wasn't malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think of this memory wipe concept for droids to be a bit like when you realize you need to do a fresh uh, install of Windows because things just aren't quite working the way that they were intended. I will not then take the next step and suggest that if you leave Windows alone, it will develop its own personality. I don't even want to imagine what kind of personality Windows would have. Eesh. Is everything all right between us? You have no need to ask. As long as we're together, I... I have no words. So, for fear of having half of you turn this video off, I'm going to ask a simple question that Howard Jones asked in 1983. What is love, anyway? I can't give you a definition of love. It's nebulous, it's subjective, it's different for everyone. Instead, I'll just say, I think you'll agree, we know it when we see it, right? Or perhaps when someone tells you, when someone rams it down your throat. Q, Curie. 
I can see why humans always prattle so much about love. It is quite intoxicating. I must warn you, the thought of you being uh, close with anyone else causes very complicated emotions in me. I think we are too good. Can you hear? My heart may burst. So how can we be sure that Curie does actually love us? She certainly tells us she loves us often enough. Love, love, love. What a wonderful world. She absolutely behaves like someone who's in love. You must be very careful. The idea of you coming to harm? There. My heart is fluttering again. She talks about love as if it affects her on the inside. I find myself coming inside. I feel so very happy. This is the world. She even sounds like someone who's new to love, and that makes sense, because she is. It is hard to contemplate science with you so close. You know, you move in such a delightful manner. It is very stimulating. I find myself eager for the night. I think perhaps it is important to understand how she came by her belief that she loves you. Curie was imbued with a genuine interest in science to collect and analyze data. Let me see and scan as many indigenous life forms as possible. It is, of course, for science. To use the scientific method to uncover the truths about the world. And I get that, that's awesome. Fast forward to the day the lone survivor releases Curie from Vault 81. From that point forward, she is learning all she can about the world around her, including about you. She observes you, and after seeing you act in a certain manner, she finds agreeable, she falls in love with you. So here's a question. Is a synth being programmed to love just as good as them learning to love over time? I ask this because we have another case of a synth that loves you. Depending on which path you've chosen throughout the main quest line, you may get to the point where father reprograms the synth child Sean to think of you as its father or mother, and it behaves in a manner that a 10 year old boy would toward its parents. Hey kid, why did you call me mom? What? You're my mother. Why else would I call you that? Who told you I was your mother? What do you mean? Nobody told me. You just are. <sighs> it loves them. It loves your character. Putting aside the differences between romantic love and paternal and maternal love, is there a difference between synth child Sean's love for you and Curie's love for you? I think the answer is yes. She has decided she loves you after spending time with you. Her experience has formed her opinion, and that's the difference. She learned to love you. As I said, love feels different to each of us, and Curie is no different. She may not be feeling it like a human, but to paraphrase Nagel, there is something that it's like for Curie to be in love. That can't be denied. Curie's love is more similar to what I understand love to be. Curie's love seems more natural. Curie's love seems genuine. The love displayed by the synth child, Sean, it seems a bit, um, dare I say, too synthetic. So in conclusion, if just any old Gen 3 synth walked up to me and said they loved me, I just think they're doing what they've been programmed to do. But Curie is different. Now, you know what the big question is? Could you love her back? Oh gosh, thank you very much for choosing to spend your time to watch my video. Um, thank you the idea for this video no joke came to me when i had a fever so it's a bit atypical but it links into some of my um, training in the real world and i hope you enjoyed watching it as much as i did making it the comments are open below so feel free to make a comment ask a question politely correct me on anything you saw or anything i said in this video that'd be cool please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, this is a new channel that I'm growing and I'm trying to keep the quality of my videos high. Videos come out perhaps every fortnight. Okay, that's all for now. Cheers, Remnexus out.